In this lecture, we consider a few practical aspects of power supply systems. Our previous lectures were focused on much of the uh, you can say circuit analysis and theory and uh, this lecture is more practical, it considers more practical aspects and uh, actually the very nuts and bolts of power systems. The supply of electricity, the most important concern is of course safety to human beings and uh, this actually dictates the nature of supply, how connections are made to equipment etc. This is what we will learn in this lecture. So, first of all uh, we what we will do is uh, understand one important consideration that is uh, relating to the safety of human beings uh, and uh, the design of the electrical power supply system based on safety. Uh, we, we shall see that safety is uh, the study of safety is uh, very uh, strongly uh, you know coupled to the study of how the earth behaves. Uh, you know as a electrical medium. Uh, one of the important things is of course that we uh, most of the things are in fact placed or uh, you know supported by the earth including human beings. So, uh, it is inevitable that the earth uh, or uh, you know equivalently the ground uh, comes into uh, the safety uh, you know uh, engineering of safety and this is something which we shall uh, try to understand in this lecture. So, uh, looking at the one of the uh, the first slide on this is actually relating to safety itself. If we have a, a point P here which is live in the sense that there is some potential of P with respect to P dash uh, which is uh, the ground and the ground actually means uh, the ground on which we are standing. Then uh, if uh, I happen to touch this point P. Uh, the circuit could in fact get completed through my body because I am standing on the earth. Of course, there are uh, several uh, if you if you can model the source itself as having a source impedance of Z S H as shown in this slide uh, then and the contact resistance that is between my fingers and the life point which I am touching is R C and uh, R B is the resistance of my body which could be around uh, you know 1 kilo ohm or uh, you know around around that value and uh, R g dash is in fact the contact between my body and the ground. So, that could of course, depends on uh, what I am wearing whether I am wearing footwear or not. So, uh, this uh, you know this is essentially the circuit which comes into play when uh, we are trying to understand what happens if I touch a life point. Now, of course, uh, what happens when you touch a life point like I have shown in this figure is that some current flows through your body and uh, the current flow through your body unfortunately, can affect your muscles in your body and uh, this can in fact, be a safety hazard. So, in fact, uh, this aspect was studied uh, you know by several engineers uh, in the 50s and 60s and uh, they in fact, uh, you know try to do experiments uh, both on animals and human beings and they have come across some uh, you know findings as to what is the safe level of current which can flow through our body. So, what they have found is in fact, that uh, the fatal current for an average human being at 60 hertz is uh, the current is 0.165 amperes divided by root t where t is the time for which this current flows. So, of course, uh, the this current is in ampere. So, you see that in case for one second uh, if uh, 165 milli amperes uh, force to one's body then it can be fatal. So, this is a, a kind of a, a kind of a empirical formula which uh, has been uh, you know obtained from several experiments and there are several publications in which this has been reported. Now, uh, if you go to the next slide there are some more interesting uh, you know findings that is uh, based on experiments that is when the uh, you pr practically feel no sensation uh, you know uh, below 1 ampere 1 milli ampere sorry and uh, you get a slight tingling at around 5.2 I am talking for the men uh, under direct current conditions. In fact, it is lesser for uh, 60 hertz in fact, the th perception threshold itself is uh, uh, significantly lower uh, for AC 
and uh, thereafter of course uh, several of us sometime in our lives would have uh, felt a shock uh, which is uh, probably not painful but uh, certainly unpleasant and uh, but muscular control is not lost but uh, after that uh, you can get uh, if you are current in if you are touching a dc terminal and the current is around 62 milliamperes uh, you may find a painful shock and above this you may actually lose muscular control and that is called a let go threshold. Uh, if you go on further you will find that after that point yes you will find that you may actually have very severe effects and uh, you after a point uh, which is given by uh, what is shown here is point number 7 uh, you have got ventricular fibrillation which is essentially a heart attack or loss of control of the heart muscle that can occur uh, at uh, currents which are around uh, 1 ampere uh, for a very short duration of only 30 milliseconds. Uh, but as I mentioned uh, earlier if you have uh, this current flowing for a long uh, if current is lower you can sustain it for slightly longer time. In fact uh, 0 0.5 milli 0 0.5 amperes for 3 seconds uh, you, you is the kind of threshold. So, these are these are the approximate uh, you know uh, uh, you know benchmarks which have been obtained uh, through experiments. Now, if you uh, in fact go uh, and uh, try to you know use this information to design safe systems, uh, you really need to find out ways to interrupt a current of this you know if it if it is detected that it is flowing through a human body. So, there have to be in fact uh, some ways and means to protect you from shocks and one of the ways of course, to protect you is to ensure that uh, you even if you touch a live object the voltage of the live object with respect to ground is small enough. So, that that much current does not flow through you. So, this is one of the ways in fact, you try to reduce the uh, risk of shock. The other uh, one more interesting thing is a bit of a diversion, but uh, if you are in fact, in the vicinity of uh, high voltage transmission lines you uh, you, you can in fact uh, feel the fields in, uh, those who have been to a, a extra high voltage substation may have felt that their uh, the hair in their body is kind of getting erect uh, when they go under a, a high voltage transmission line. And uh, this means of course, that uh, the electrical field is high enough to actually make uh, have electrostatic kind of effects. And, um, of course, if the electrical field goes beyond 15 to 20 kilo volt per meter and a human being comes in that field, uh, there may be in fact, again perceptible effects like uh, you know uh, the sharp points or sharp bends in your body like here etcetera you can actually have discharges that that is of course, at uh, high field levels which are actually seen only under EHV uh, extra high voltage transmission lines. And therefore, from a you know uh, electrical fields normally a threshold of around 5 kilo volt per meter has been in fact, uh, you know specified by some countries as a threshold. But coming back to the problem of shocks which is uh, involves current flowing through one's body. Now, uh, when one when one uh, comes in uh, contact with a live object it all depends how much current flows through one's body depends on what kind of uh, situation one is encountering. So, the question is uh, what do we do to prevent shocks? What we do is in fact, uh, is connect certain ex exposed metallic parts to the earth like uh, for example, uh, the body of say uh, an equipment uh, you know an electrical iron which is actually not uh, it is only a part of the body which is not uh, normally. Uh, live that needs to be connected to the earth because that is something which you may touch. Similarly, uh, if you go to a, a high voltage substation you may find all the towers in the uh, which which are actually in fact, uh, on which the transmission wires are suspended are also connected to the ground. So, that if you go and touch a tower you will not feel a shock. So, you need to uh, so, how is that ensured? that is ensured that whatever exposed metallic parts are there, they are, they are as close to the ground potential as possible. So, that is the important thing. Of course, uh, remember that uh, the earth itself is not exactly an equipotential surface in the sense it is not a very good conductor. So, 
different points in the earth you may actually find that the potential is quite different. This is in fact uh, uh, something which you can uh, you know th this is uh, something which we will learn in the next few slides. But the important thing is uh, can you have sustained current flow through the earth? The thing is that if current flows through the earth then there will be in fact voltage drop uh, on the earth surface along the direction of the current. So, if you have a voltage drop and uh, uh, you know it depends on what is the resistance of the earth at that point how much voltage drop you feel. For example, if you are walking on the earth and the potential between two uh, your feet is large enough then uh, the current may even flow through your body. In fact, a part of the current will flow through your body, but it may be above the perception threshold or even the safety threshold. So, to just uh, give you an example of this we will go to the next slide and what you notice here is uh, that depending on the nature of the soil your soil resistivity may vary from 5 ohm meter to around 2000 ohm meter uh, under normal and high ra rainfall uh, you know situations. In fact, uh, soil resistivity may be even higher in cases where you have desert or low moisture conditions. So, the the important point is that the which you should remember is that the earth is a uh, you know is a conducting medium although it is not a very good conducting medium you cannot compare it to for example, say copper uh, you know which has several orders higher of conductivity which is of course, the inverse of resistivity. This in fact, what you have shown here is uh, the resistivity in ohm meter. So, this is rho which you multiply by the length by the area of uh, the flow of the current uh, which will give you in fact, the resistance. Now, if a current is flowing through the earth then you can expect that there will be a going to be a drop a voltage drop uh, along the direction of the current flow. But of course, the question then uh, arises is uh, what is the resistance it depends on the area in which the current flows. Okay. So, now earth of course, is a uh, you know if you look at the earth cross section of the earth uh, you know the uh, uh, the area in which the current can flow is really very very large. Okay. But uh, you that current in fact, gets into the soil through what is known as electrodes. So, as we shall see later to in fact, do some kind of earthing you need to connect a, a kind of a metallic stake into the ground and that forms a connection to the earth and the current flows from that stake uh, you know uh, or you know you can say rod into the ground and once it enters the ground it has in fact, uh, other than the initial por par portion where it actually flows away from that electrode it encounters a larger and larger area because the earth itself is a really a large area and the current can in fact, flow through a uh, you know very large area. So, the uh, the most of the resistance occurs in fact, near the electrode uh, where the contact with the earth itself is made because the earth can be considered as uh, a conductor with a very large cross section although it has got a very uh, poor conductivity. So, this is an important thing. So, the most of the resistance occurs at the contact point between the electrode and the earth. Uh, the important thing is that uh, because of this resistance as you will find that in the direction of the current flow there will be in fact, a voltage drop. One another aspect which I have not mentioned here of course, is that under AC conditions uh, you will find that the resistance is slightly higher uh, because, uh, because of what is known as the skin effect and electromagnetic effect which we shall consider later when we consider transmission lines. And the second point of course, is that when you have a current flow through the earth the current actually flows a part of it the return is if you have through the earth then uh, the loop which you have also has a kind of a parasitic inductance. So, you in fact, you have in fact, not only a resistive drop, but an inductive drop uh, during AC conditions when you have got a loop flow with the return actually coming through the earth. So, the, the important uh, point of course, is that not only do you have a voltage drop uh, through the earth, but under AC conditions you will have uh, an inductive drop also. So, uh, in fact, the earth current flow through the earth is in fact, not used in most situations. Uh, it is used uh, uh, current uh, the earth can be used as a return path only under very specific circumstances. In fact, uh, uh, you can use earth as a uh, return path in some applications like HVDC, where you have got um, very very special electrode arrangements to, to re reduce the amount of resistivity near where the electrode is buried 
and uh, the fact that you have got DC ensures that there is no skin effect a thing which we will study a bit later. Therefore, the earth's cross section can be used to the fullest extent for the current flow through the return path. Okay. So, sometimes there are systems in the world which use what is known as single wire earth return where your uh, you know your, your current flows through the you know one wire above the earth and returns via the earth uh, back to the source. So, but these uh, systems are used for uh, uh, you know in remote locations etc. But there is a slight uh, safety issue uh, as I mentioned uh, some time back since there is a current flow through the earth there is a voltage drop. Uh, along the earth and if an animal or a human being is walking on the earth and there is a large current there will be a large voltage drop and in fact there could be a large voltage between the his feet something which is shown in the next slide. So, if you have got for example, uh, current flow through uh, some arrangement this is uh, showing a tower, but it could be some wire which is connected to the uh, an electrode and connected to the earth down there yeah buried some buried portion. So, this is an electrode and uh, suppose some current is flowing there if the current in fact is large you can have a large enough potential between the two feet uh, of the person standing there this is called a step voltage. Uh, this could be really large in case of very large currents especially during fault conditions where uh, a large current flows. Uh, so, uh, the important thing is whatever current flows through this tower to the ground. Uh, through the electrode here should not uh, have a voltage more than a specified value otherwise there will be a current throw flow between the feet of the person and that could be also fatal. So, this is something which uh, one should remember that uh, current flow through the earth is normally uh, you know not not really uh, you know recommended, but we do have in some parts of the world uh, single wire earth return systems where the current actually normal current flows through the earth. So, so in some circumstances uh, uh, this um, especially where the soil resistivity is not very high uh, you will find that uh, SWER systems are used, but these are very rare. So, most systems in what you would have encountered would never use earth as a normal uh, you know return path, uh, but under very specific situations you could uh, like in HPDC where you have a DC uh, and where you make very very good earth electrode correction. So, as to minimize this uh, resistance electrode resistance. So, the electrode resistance is of course, the contact resistance between the electrode and the ground that is where most of the resistance is in fact encountered in the earth return path. Uh, the other thing is of course, uh, if you uh, the similar thing can happen if you touch the tower and that is called a touch potential if there is a potential difference uh, you know between a point you touch on the tower and the point where you are touching your, your feet are touching the ground then uh, that itself will cause a large enough current flow under certain circumstances. So, this is called E touch this is the amount of open circuit voltage uh, which uh, which in fact uh, a body can sustain uh, in case uh, he touches the tower. Normally, this voltage would be very low, but uh, if a large current flows like during a fault or a short circuit this voltage can be substantial, because the grounding arrangements that is the resistance between the tower and the ground and the ground to this uh, his the feet uh, etcetera they, they need not be very small. Okay. And of course, uh, it also depends on the uh, value of R 0 which is there uh, which is in fact the resistance from uh, this this resistance of the ground ok. Yeah. So, uh, the point here is of course, uh, that uh, if you uh, the one thing which is in fact not shown here is uh, the fact that the ground also has a loop inductance which you have not shown. So, R 0 actually you should uh, in fact consider both the resistance and the loop inductance which is there uh, which will be the drop here ok. So, uh, in fact, uh, if we uh, the touch voltage should not be too large otherwise you can have a problem ok. So, even though in this case the metallic uh, you know object is a tower which is in fact connected to the ground uh, is uh, is connected to the ground you can under especially during large current situations have a uh, shock through your body. So, uh, so the thing is that uh, in both the situations shown here the previous one and the present one 
you in fact had some kind of grounding the tower was in fact grounded by a electrode that is connected to the earth via the electrode. You may have noticed that the earth is a very important thing because we are standing on the earth. So, safety and earth are two uh, you know connected kind of uh, issues uh, which we have to consider. Now, uh, so one thing which I mentioned here and I will repeat again is that some kind of earthing is required because you can come in touch with metallic objects uh, and these metallic object objects may normally uh, you know uh, may, may actually not be connected to anything, but they may still uh, under if there is a fault they can actually become live. Okay. So, actually if uh, for example, the body of several equipment uh, you know although they are insulated from the live components within uh, they may become live if the insulation fails or the insulation is degraded or the insulation is extremely thin. So, you know because of uh, you know you can say a capacitive effect this can happen. For example, if you have got a metallic object and you if it is insulated from the ground that is has no connection to the ground and it is in the vicinity of a live object live means uh, live means it has got some potential with respect to the ground. So, this is insulation insulation this is ground or earth and uh, this metallic body uh, if it is near a live object uh, it can actually uh, either become live because the insulation here fails and this is gets connected to this in this case this acquires the potential of this and uh, if if I if I touch this I can get a shock. So, I can get a shock here alternatively this is not connected, but the capacitance between this and this is very low and in such a case uh, because of this capacitive coupling you may find that this has some potential okay, with respect to the ground. So, when you touch it you can have a current flow through your ground this happens if this insulation is very thin and this capacitance is quite large. Okay. So, this also can happen. So, uh, either your metallic object becomes live uh, because of contact actual contact or the insulation degrades or you got extremely thin insulation in that case you could in fact have a substantial potential of this with respect to ground and if this is insulated uh, essential this is insulated and if I touch this I get this current part of that current could flow through you through me. So, this is uh, what could happen uh, in case you have got uh, you know um, isolated metallic object uh, which is uh, you know in the vicinity of uh, an another live object. Okay. So, one of the ways to avoid this is of course, to earth this metallic object that is connected to the earth and if that happens I am on earth and this is also of earth potential. So, the chances the amount of current flowing through me uh, will kind of get divided by the uh, in this path and this path. Okay. So, this is what uh, will happen and the amount of current going through me can be reduced and that in fact improves your the safety. Okay. In fact, uh, there are several factors uh, which will affect the way we do earthing and uh, we shall actually when I say what is an earthing scheme is something which we will consider uh, you know one by one, but essentially the things we worry about is safety whether uh, we have service continuity that is if there is a fault can we still operate up at least a part of the system uh, are there any abnormal voltage hazards uh, are they multi what happens if there are multiple faults uh, to the ground what happens under those situations. And of course, if there is a fault how to locate it quickly and disconnect the system and of course, uh, as in any other engineering uh, you know system the cost is also a concern. Okay. Now, before we go ahead just we uh, I have a quick video to show you that uh, just to you know uh, give you an idea that uh, current does flow through our uh, through our body and uh, in fact, uh, it is affected by the kind of uh, you know resistance to the ground. Okay. So, what I will do I will just show a quick uh, uh, you know video of uh, uh, using uh, the well known tester the basic uh, idea of a tester is that uh, you know you have got this is a kind of insulated jacket and this is a metal this goes through and through inside 
and this is connected to a series register and uh, kind of a neon lamp here I will just show it a neon lamp and this is connected to the end of the screwdriver and this is the point I if I put my finger here for example then current can flow through my finger through my body to ground. So, in case this connects to a live part there is some current flow here this resistance is large enough so that the current flows the flowing through uh, our body is not uh, is much below the safety threshold and uh, but since the current flows this neon lamp lights up ok. So, uh, if I connect a live part and I touch one this metallic end here you will in fact have current flow through one's body and uh, uh, in fact uh, this current flows through the ground ok. The amount of current depends on this resistance and the resistance of contact also the source impedance here uh, what you are connecting here. So, this can be modeled by a source behind the source impedance. So, this in fact is the uh, kind of uh, circuit which is there and uh, this tester is often used to check whether a part is live of course, there are uh, the problem there may be if the current is too low the neon lamp may not light up. So, there is a danger that you may consider a live uh, you know point uh, to be uh, in fact not live. So, that there is one issue which you may face with this uh, you know uh, kind of tester and uh, of course, the other uh, thing which uh, safety issue is that uh, this resistance in some ways fails and if it creates a short circuit then there is a problem. So, uh, the point is this uh, the resistance then is no longer there then the current through your body can become quite large. But you know the the opposite danger is more likely uh, that is the current may not be adequate to light the lamp and then you may misinterpret the uh, point to be not live when actually it is live ok. So, uh, just before we show you this demonstration remember that uh, the three point socket which you have uh, you know you will see in most of your domestic supplies in fact a single phase supply with uh, live neutral and earth. The neutral in fact is uh, neutral is a term for a return path suppose you got a source single phase source then this neutral point and this point this is the live point and this is called a neutral point. The neutral point is usually a metallic return a metallic conductor return path that is the neutral wire and this is connected to your load ok. And uh, if your load is in fact having a metallic body then that is in fact connected to the earth in fact this is the earth or ground ok. This is the top bigger pin here is called the uh, earth this left hand side thing is called the neutral which is in fact the neutral is the return wire for the single phase supply and uh, this other point is in fact live with respect to the neutral. It is another uh, aspect is that at the place where the supply originates usually the neutral is grounded also. So, what you will find is that uh, the neutral and this earth potential are usually close to each other you know uh, as long as this you know this resistance this is a metallic connection which does not have a very large resistance. So, you will find in fact that this the potential here and the potential here are almost the same although there is a current flow and there is a resistance here and an impedance here also because of this loop. What you will find is that the potential of neutral is close to the earth though it may not be exactly equal to the earth ok. So, uh, this is something in fact we will uh, you know study presently, but uh, what we can expect is that the neutral and earth uh, uh, the potential of n at n and e with respect to the earth are usually very small voltages they are not live. Uh, because the neutral as I mentioned is for most systems the neutral is actually connected to the ground at the supply entrance or uh, at the supply transformer uh, something which we shall discuss a bit later again. Uh, so, n and e usually are near the earth potential ok. So, if I uh, if I try to try to use a tester uh, at this point and this point one end of the tester is connected to e and the other end of the tester is connected to my finger and I am standing on the earth. So, the potential difference is not much and you do not expect the potential uh, the tester neon lamp to light up. 
the same thing happens with the neutral point also, but the live point of course, you will find uh, that the neon lamp lights up provided uh, the resistance or the voltage is large enough to light the lamp, there should be enough current flowing ok. And of course, how much current flows depends on the uh, resistance uh, in series with the neon lamp as well as the resistance of my body and also the contact uh, resistances between my finger and the metallic point uh, of the tester and uh, the footwear I am wearing or the insulation between my feet and the ground ok. So, this is something which uh, we shall see uh, shortly in this video. So, first uh, you will see that this uh, one is uh, this tester is connected to the N, you see this 3 point plug here uh, that is the live point that is the neutral and that is the earth. So, uh, if you connect to the left point which is in fact the neutral you will find that uh, it does not light up because the neutral uh, very close by somewhere has been connected to the earth and uh, this will become clear when we consider uh, the various kinds of uh, uh, you know earthing connections yes. And if you look at the right hand side of uh, the new, the earth wire is in fact uh, this is a 3 point plug as I mentioned the top point is actually connected to the earth ok. So, there is a wire which runs from that that earth point and is uh, in fact connected to an electrode and connected to the ground ok. So, uh, so the potential between that point and uh, my uh, you know my finger and uh, then to my feet uh, the potential difference is very low. So, you will not find any lighting up and if you of course, uh, connect it to the third point which is the light point you will find that it lights up and uh, there it is kind of has lit up yes. Now, of course, if I remove my footwear and I stand bare feet one thing you will notice is the light it light up light slightly more lights up a bit more do you notice that. So, if I remove my sandals and uh, you will notice that there is a perceptible change in the current if I if I stand bare feet uh, then you will find that the there is a slightly you know uh, you know more brighter glow and that really shows that more current is flowing and uh, that really shows that the kind of footwear you have or if you stand on an insulating mat in fact the current may be even lower. So, this is a simple uh, you know uh, just showing in fact in this experiment some current is flowing through my ground. Uh, through my body, but it is much below the perception threshold. So, in fact, uh, the person who is doing this experiment did not feel anything ok yeah. What we will do is actually uh, consider some simple numerical examples to show how connection of a body uh, to the earth is, is important from the point of view of safety yes. So, just some simple uh, numerical examples which have been adapted from uh, Dr. K. Rajamani's book. Uh, on uh, the application guide for power engineers uh, earthing and grounding. So, uh, just consider this uh, system here uh, you have got a source uh, which has got a voltage V this point A is the live point B is the neutral point and uh, you know uh, in fact, this is a, a fuse uh, which is in series with a load. So, this uh, blue hashed thing is some load let us say it is a heater or something of that kind it is a it is a, a geyser and this is a heating element and uh, your current goes here. But the heater uh, or the load has got a metallic body which is insulated from the live part through some insulating material ok. So, normally this is insulated and uh, in fact, if I touch this uh, you know uh, the amount of current flowing through body is very small the reason being is if this insulation is uh, thick enough uh, the the capacitance between these two points is very very uh, small and uh, that means the uh, 1 upon omega c which is the impedance here uh, is actually very large and as a result of which hardly any current will flow through my body ok. Now, uh, but uh, the thing is uh, this assume, assumes that let us say we have 58 ohm load resistance and a 240 volt uh, source this is that kind of typical heater uh, element of 1 kilowatt. And uh, so, let us assume that this uh, R i is the equipment insulation resistance or impedance. Now, if you look at this uh, the equivalent circuit of this system 
normally as i mentioned some some time back that the neutral of this source is usually connected to the ground okay so this neutral of the source is connected to the ground if it is connected to the ground in that case uh, through through a ground you know you are connected it via some contact uh, it's some electrode which actually makes the contact with the earth it's usually a rod which is uh, kind of dug into the earth so this kind of uh, electrode let's say it has got a 1 ohm it's a good uh, you know 1 ohm uh, you know um, resistance is represented by 1 ohm resistance and uh, let's say uh, uh, there is very little resistance between this point and this point otherwise. So most of the resistance is basically the electrode resistance. Uh, uh, this is something we will again have a discussion a bit later uh, about the electrode resistance. Now suppose uh, so the actually the equivalent circuit is this R i is the uh, you know resistance insulation resistance or insulation impedance this is usually very very large. So there is hardly any current going to flow through your body. Let us say your body uh, along with the you know uh, the complete impedance from this point to this point is around 2 kilo ohm okay. Now in case R i becomes 0 then the C point the live point if you touch that is because of the fact that because the insulation fails. In that case the current flowing through your body becomes 120 milliampere and as we have seen earlier this is uh, not a safe value of current to flow through your body especially if it is going to flow for a long time. So this in fact unless you have some means of finding out uh, you know you have, to, you have to isolate this very rapidly otherwise this could uh, even be fatal. So the point is simply this that uh, you this kind of arrangement is not very good in fact if current flows through one's body then this is not a very good uh, arrangement. Now um, if you in fact have uh, this connected locally to the ground this E2 to the ground and again of course you have to make a contact with the ground in that case the situation slightly changes because now you have got this kind of shunting out RH but one important thing happens in the earlier case uh, you know uh, in the earlier case because our impedance is large uh, only even though a uh, kind of a, a shot occurs between the live point and this metallic body the amount of current flowing actually the fault current so to speak in case of insulation failure is only 120 milliampere although it is fatal for us uh, it may not be large enough to uh, for, for you know this may not be detected very easily uh, and uh, we near, may not be able to isolate it either. So there is a double problem that if the current is small enough so that uh, you know isolating it may not be easy uh, and the second point is but it is large enough to cause a safety problem. So this kind of arrangement is not good uh, of course one may of course say that why not uh, remove this uh, you know this I mentioned that this neutral point here is grounded here uh, why not just isolate this neutral point. So this is a, this is a valid question uh, we shall actually see what could be an issue with this kind of arrangement mostly you will find that this neutral wire is in fact neutral point is grounded okay at the source end itself. So if of course this were to be isolated uh, and not connected to the ground the amount of current flowing th through us would be negligible. But since this is connected to the ground there would indeed be a flow through our, our bodies okay. If, if this were not connected then the only uh, you know connection to the ground so to speak other due to the capacitances between this wire parasitics between this wire and the earth. Okay. So uh, this is these are very very uh, you know small capacitances and the impedances are very large. So in case you have a isolated neutral then the amount of current flow will be low okay. So if in case the neutral is connected to ground here it makes a lot of sense to ground this body because if I ground this body then what happens is that the current gets shunted away from me okay because this resistance is small okay and let us say if this is 1 ohm for all practical purposes the parallel combination of this is uh, will be 1 ohm because this is around 2 kilo ohm or so okay it depends actually it depends on the contact resistance what footwear I am wearing and so on. And uh, but one of the important things if this R i becomes 0 the amount of fault current because of the failure of the insulation will be quite large. Now this is also an advantage 
because if the fault current is large you can also detect it very very quickly using a fuse okay so a simple fuse will isolate this but if you look at actually do the calculation this is still not quite right in fact even though i have managed to shunt this out with a small resistance uh, the fault current being large the fault current is 120 amperes okay and uh, but the body current flowing through the body is 60 milliamperes smaller than what we saw earlier but still it is still uh, risky this kind of current flow through the body if it goes on for long enough time this could be uh, even be have a you know it could be dangerous. So, this kind of situation is not also uh, you know uh, not not something which is uh, uh, recommended it is uh, the best situation occurs when you have actually connected this point to this point through a metallic connection. So, the metallic connection ensures that there is low resistance between uh, this this if you are here you have assumed 1, but here it since it is a metallic connection to this E 1 point the resistance of this wire is very low of course it depends on the length, but this is generally very low and therefore now the current flow to my body may be very small because this bonding resistance if you assume it is very small the amount of current flow through my body is going to be extremely small extremely small. So, in this case also the fault current is very large and it can be easily you know detected by using a fuse. So, uh, what we see here is of course, that uh, now the you know because we this R b is extremely small uh, you have hardly any current going to flow through your body because you have made a direct metallic connection which has got much smaller resistance than these uh, these earlier uh, you know combinations which in fact included a electrode resistance here. So, uh, this kind of arrangement is in fact a good kind of arrangement in which you have got a metallic connection between uh, the earth. So, metallic this is called a, in fact a protective earth wire ok. Now, so uh, 2 pin wiring of course, there is a danger of a shock in case the insulation fails, but a 3 pin plug you have got this return wire which as I mentioned here keeps you safe ok. So, now in fact you will find that this so this 3 pin wiring with the metallic uh, you know body which is grounded is in fact a safe kind of uh, way of operating. In fact, this is uh, this is connected to wire which goes right back to the source neutral and the source grounding ok. So, uh, now uh, the important thing I did mention some time back that the neutral is uh, grounded now of course, so we really need to look at various uh, aspects of earthing not uh, this question which normally would come to your uh, you know would come to your mind is what uh, what what exactly why should we ground the neutral or you know what what is what is the implication of not grounding the neutral and so on ok. So, in fact, the Indian standard uh, code uh, has in fact um, 3043 has in fact defined several ways of connection uh, which kind of uh, you know uh, you know you can consider several ways in which you can uh, have earthing some are more safe than the other and we shall consider them one by one. Now, this is uh, called the T n s connection T is for terra which means ground n is the neutral wire neutral remember is the return conductor in a three phase system which is star connected the star point is also called a neutral point. So, uh, one thing which of course, you should uh, remember that this neutral wire which is of course, the return wire in a single phase system usually our power systems are three phase systems this is something aspect which we considered before and this is the neutral wire or the neutron return wire ok and this is uh, the phase A, B and C. So, the neutral uh, for a star connected point you have got a 4 wire system uh, if you if you have a neutral wire coming and you can in fact connect single phase loads between uh, you know any phase and the neutral and this of course, you can also have 3 phase loads and uh, they could be of course, connected in delta or star. So, this kind of uh, you know uh, this is called a neutral wire. Now, uh, 
uh, one of the connections which have been mentioned here the neutral of course, this is a grounded system in the sense that the neutral is grounded. So, the T and S system has got is, is what is known as terra and neutral. The neutral is connected to the ground at the source this is a three phase system I am sorry three phase system. So, L 1 L 2 L 3 correspond to A B C phase uh, A B C phases and the neutral wire is the return conductor. Uh, if everything is you got a balanced three phase load no current flows to the neutral under normal circumstances, but neutral can carry current under normal circumstances. So, the neutral wire is in fact designed to carry some return current because you can always you you are not assured that your load is going to be balanced always. So, your neutral does carry some current uh, under normal circumstances I mean uh, it, it is not unusual to see some current in the neutral because you may not have a three phase balance load. In fact, you can have single phase loads with the neutral wire acting as a return wire for that single phase load. Okay. So, what we uh, see here is in this uh, slide is uh, what is known as a TNS system. T is terra which means the earth and N is neutral. The neutral point is grounded at the source end. Okay. The source end could be a transformer we will just consider three phase transformers uh, later in this course, but you can consider this as three phase source uh, with a neutral point grounded three phase star connected source with a neutral point grounded. And you have got two separate wires which are in fact coming uh, from uh, there is a neutral wire and there is also a protective earth wire. Now, if you go to previous slides yeah this uh, protective earth is what I shown in green here. Uh, in the figure on the left yeah, right from which goes right from that point to this. So, there is a metallic connect, metallic conductor connection uh, which is called a protective earth conductor. So, this is the as, as I just to recap what we did remember that this is the best kind of situation uh, this is better than the situation given in the previous slide which is where we have uh, uh, you know no conduct uh, you know the current flow is actually going to in case of fault is going to actually flow through the earth uh, in this case, but uh, in the next case it is mostly going to flow through the conductor because the conductor has got much lower uh, impedance okay, uh, because it is a metallic conductor. So, uh, remember that this green wire is what is known as the protective earth wire. So, you actually have a protective earth wire coming right from the source to this. So, this is called a TNS system. So, uh, if you look at a TNS uh, system in fact, it is for shown for a single phase load here uh, the exposed metallic body which is not live down, which is not live unless there is a fault is connected to the uh, protective earth conductor conducting wire flowing right from the source earth to this point. Okay. So, the earth connection is through a wire. Okay. Uh, this is uh, in fact, um, you know the protective earth may be in fact the armor that is the outermost you know armor is a kind of a uh, you know metallic uh, in fact is a conductor uh, it is a conducting uh, you know element which actually uh, provides mechanical strength to the cable it is called armor. Okay. So, this in fact you may use that as a protective earth uh, conductor yeah. In fact, uh, uh, you know uh, the TNS system you could also uh, in addition to this uh, especially when you got three phase loads uh, have a local earth connection. Okay. So, this is a local earth connection in fact, uh, uh, this in fact uh, is more like what we have seen a bit before. So, just let me let us go, go here. So, there is a earth connection here as well as there is a metallic connection here. So, there is a current path through the earth as well as through this, uh, but this is a low uh, impedance path compared to this because it involves the resistance of the earth especially near the electrode whereas this is a low impedance path. Okay. So, if you look at this uh, system this one or this one uh, you can have a local earth uh, also you know you can have a electrode driven to the earth here, but of course remember that this is a preferred path of the current because this impedance is going to be smaller, but the thing is that uh, you know this is a uh, you know this in case this conductor if there is a degradation of this armor or this gets broken 
protective earth gets broken. So, at least you have got this connected to the earth through this. So, at least you have got earthing uh, at the load. Okay. So, by chance if this breaks at least you are you are coming to situation number 2 here. Okay. So, which is not as good as this situation, but you know better than not having an earth correction at all like this one. So, it is better to have this, but even better to have this. Okay. So, TNS effectively here ensures that there is a local earthing as well as a protective earth conductor and this is very good. Only thing is of course, if you have if you have got a broken earth a PE conductor then you have to rely on the earth. So, we are not as safe as uh, when this protective earth conductor which is of low, very low impedance is connected. Okay. Uh, one more uh, type of connection is what is known as the TNC connection where the protective earth and neutral is combined. Now, this is actually not a very safe kind of situation. Uh, it can be made safer by some making some changes to it, but uh, let us just look at this system. So, you have got a three phase source and uh, the source neutral is grounded and uh, this is a three wire system and actually this neutral wire is coming right from here and we use this itself as the protective earth wire. So, what we can do is you know have a load connected here and uh, this is your load uh, you know let us say these are this is your load a three phase load I am not shown this is where something is connected here this is your load which I am not showing in detail uh, and uh, this neutral may also be connected to your load it may be a star connected load but this is also connected to the earth. So, in a sense of course, this is a metallic connection and it is connected to the earth, but this is not the local earth, but the risk out here is of course, that in case uh, your neutral gets broken what will happen is that uh, uh, you do not have any earthing. Okay. So, if this gets disconnected this is no longer having an earth and uh, you know the potential. So, the in fact, in case there is a fault. Uh, or in case uh, there is an unbalance for example, now what is the circuit here let us say it is a star connected resistance kind of load. So, I will just show you this suppose this is phase A, phase B and phase C this is a load suppose and this is this is not connected here of course, these are just going in and uh, this is insulated this is a metallic body this is not a connection is go going through without contacting the metallic body and uh, also the neutral wire is there which is going back. Now, if this neutral gets broken and if this resistance is unbalanced what will happen to this neutral voltage? Uh, in fact, you may find that the neutral voltage with respect to ground may increase this is something we did uh, in the uh, in the previous class when we have an unbalanced load it is possible that the neutral voltage now is not equal uh, you know if this and this neutral is open. So, if the neutral is open then uh, you know you may find that the neutral voltage with respect to the source neutral neutral of load and neutral of source if this gets broken then the neutral of load and the neutral of the source uh, you can have a potential and if the neutral of the source is connected to ground what it means of course is that the neutral of the load has got a potential with respect to the ground. And if you are using the neutral itself as the ground wire here under normal circumstances this would actually uh, earth the body of the load the metallic body uh, of the load, but uh, because of the fact now this neutral voltage is not at the earth voltage you will find that the potential of the body with respect to earth has will become large. Okay. So, this is one problem which you may face. So, broken neutral in this kind of system is not a very good idea. So, what people do is of course, have some kind of earthing here also. So, at the a, at the neutral at the load end also have some kind of earthing. So, in case the neutral gets broken and you do not have load side earthing then you have a problem because the neutral voltage may rise especially if you have got an unbalanced load and if the neutral voltage rises that would mean that the body exposed metallic body potential with respect to earth 
would also rise because the source neutral and which is at ground potential and the load neutral uh, there will be a voltage. So, which also means that the neutral at the loads voltage is higher than the earth's potential uh, higher or uh, is not at the earth's potential and that would mean that the metallic body also has got a potential. So, you can avoid this by having some kind of grounding arrangement here ok, but uh, again uh, if you break this although you have got grounding you are back to situation number 2 which is still not uh, absolutely desirable you know what is desirable is to have a metallic connection between the earth and the ground, but uh, the point is that uh, you have got grounding here, but uh, you know what will happen is that if this neutral wire breaks you will have to rely on the actual earth flow of current through the earth and that is not exactly a safe situation as I mentioned sometime back it is better to have a actual connection metallic connection through a conducting uh, metal from uh, the source earth and the load earth ok. Uh, now you uh, you know how much current will flow through your body in case you touch a live exposed metallic part because of a fault will depend a lot on the electrode resistances the resistances of your uh, body etcetera not exactly a very nice situation ok. So, uh, TNC is uh, uh, you know if you got a broken neutral there is a problem uh, broken neutral uh, if you do not have load side grounded can be outright dangerous because the life part uh, the exposed metallic part may actually acquire a potential which is higher than the earth potential even under normal circumstances if the load is unbalanced. So, this is one problem which you may have. So, uh, what is done uh, in such a in fact, uh, so there is a problem in the TNS system the problem comes in case your protective earth conductor breaks because then again you are back to this kind of situation ok. Uh, with the TNC connection uh, if the neutral conductor breaks and you do not have the ground connection local ground you are actually having a risky situation. So, this is uh, so even TNC is uh, will also have a problem even if the load is uh, grounded. So, most the safe you know one uh, where one uh, you know uh, way of avoiding both these problems of either protective earth or the neutral wire getting disconnected is to have a situation like this where you have got a three phase source neutral grounded and uh, what you have here is of course, the load let us say it is a three phase load you can have three single phase loads as well and you have got a neutral wire is connected here the metallic body exposed metallic parts are connected to the ground by out here. You also have a protective earth conductor and what you do in addition is to in fact uh, you know bond these neutral and protective earth at various points and connect it into the earth. So, what this is called protective multiple earth in which you are actually. So, in case either the neutral connection connection gets broken or the, the protective earth wire gets broken still you have got a metallic connection uh, between both the body and uh, the neutral both have got in fact metallic uh, connections back to the source. So, protective so there is no less danger of uh, either the protective earth wire getting disconnected because you have got an alternative path even if this gets broken at this point suppose this gets broken at this point you can for a part of the path share the neutral for uh, you know you, uh, you know have a metallic connection through the neutral ok. So, similarly the neutral also has got uh, an alternative path. So, you know what you have done is effectively the protective earth conductor and the neutral conductor are connected at various points. So, this is uh, in fact uh, uh, you know becomes a very safe uh, or the safest kind of situation uh, which you can have and is often used in urban kind of power supplies. Yeah. So, uh, the next connection is in fact uh, 
the T and C, uh, this is something which you have discussed right now. Uh, you have got additional earthing, uh, intermediate earthing, which is in fact a variation of what I, what I just explained. Yeah. The other kind of uh, connection is where you do not have uh, uh, you know connection protective earth uh, wire at all, and the neutral is not combined with uh, you know the earth wire. Uh, protective earth wire because there is no protective earth wire coming right from the source to this point. So, it is called terra terra because you actually have uh, uh, in earth at the local at the other end. Now, this is in fact not again a very uh, you know safe system unless you have some ways reli to reliably detect uh, you know these currents. As we saw in the numerical example uh, which was shown in the uh, some time ago. Uh, having a local earth uh, electrode and connecting the body of uh, the exposed metallic part uh, or the body uh, exposed body metallic body of the equipment to the earth locally through an electrode is not the safest thing you can have because the current through the body through our body in case we touch uh, a, a metallic part which has become inadvertently live uh, is not so small. In fact, we saw three examples. Uh, one in which there was no uh, you know um, you know no metallic body was not grounded one in which it was grounded but to a local earth and one when it was a, a grounded through a conductive you know a metallic return path and uh, we saw that the last one was most the safest so if you in, if one is intending to have this kind of situation where there is no protective earth wire from the source coming then uh, it may be a good idea to in fact have additional safety measures uh, to actually detect uh, you know currents above a certain threshold. So, that in case a, such a current flows to the body it should trip uh, you know uh, uh, very quickly. So, you should in fact have uh, what is known as uh, residual current devices uh, which can may be used for protection. So, uh, just to come back to what is this uh, uh, you know uh, residual current device. So, as I mentioned some time back that uh, if you have got a local connection to the earth, but no uh, metallic return path uh, for the earth or no protective earth conductor in that case uh, the amount of current flowing through your body into the ground if the ground actually becomes the return path uh, may in fact be more than the safety threshold. So, what one can do in fact is if you have got a three phase supply with neutral uh, what you can do is uh, take the sum of the three currents. So, have something which measures I 1, I, uh, I neutral uh, sorry I A, I neutral, I B and I C. Uh, if there is no current flowing through the ground then the sum of the three uh, the four currents should be equal to 0, but in case so under these circumstances in fact. oops I am sorry. So, uh, if everything is uh, you know uh, under, under uh, normal circumstances you will find that there is no uh, you know there is no current flowing uh, if you in fact sorry if you got current I A, I B, I C and I neutral the sum of these four currents is going to be 0 in this direction. Okay. But in case there is because of some reason uh, somebody touches some live part here or a metallic body becomes live and I touch it some current will flow through the body into the ground through, through the you know uh, through my uh, through my feet into the ground and there would be a flow like this. Now, the problem is of course, that this current may be very small. Okay. So, in this case the sum of these four currents is not going to be 0, but if I have got a very sensitive device which can for example, isolate suppose you, you know the example considered uh, you know uh, in case the current through one's body is say just a few uh, what do you call uh, 30 or 40 milli amperes uh, or uh, you know you should be able to detect it. So, this kind of system may be required in case you have got this TT system, because uh, that can actually uh, if you have got such a reliable device which will trip 
in case the sum of the four currents here goes greater than a certain value you will in fact be able to uh, detect uh, you know then you will be able to protect the person because uh, we had considered a numerical example and we saw in fact that 60 milliamperes for that numerical example flows to the body which is in fact not safe okay although the metallic body is grounded locally there is still some current flowing through us and in that case you may in fact find that um, uh, one of the ways to quickly detect it is to have uh, some of these four currents in case it you know uh, it exceeds a certain amount of current it could be flowing through a human body and therefore you should quickly isolate it. So, such a device is in fact called uh, a residual current circuit breaker and uh, uh, we shall just show us quick demo uh, to in fact illustrate this. So, in fact uh, in cases where there is a chance of a very low uh, relatively low current which may not be detected especially for example you do not have a protective earth conductor therefore the fault currents may be low uh, it is a good idea to uh, you know have this residual current device but not necessary in many cases where there is a protective earth conductor or in fact what I uh, the system which I showed where the protective earth conductor in the neutral is connected at regular intervals uh, and grounded uh, uh, so that is called protective multiple earthing. So, that uh, situation is quite safe, but uh, in other situations you can have a small current flow through the ground if there is some uh, you know uh, through one's body for example and if you want to detect it it is good to have a residual current device. So, this is especially useful in cases where protective earth conductor gets disconnected. So, what we will do is uh, just do an experiment and uh, what we will see is that we have this uh, uh, say a star connected load we will in fact show a star connected lamp load and we will have this uh, residual current device and in fact this residual current device will detect uh, the sum of the currents flowing in the same direction and in case there is a current flowing through any other path which actually signals that there is a fault. So, normally you do not expect much current to flow through uh, you know uh, even if this is grounded at this point you do not expect this uh, much current to flow through the actual earth because this path has got high impedance. So, relatively high impedance compared to this path or if there is a protective earth conductor the protective earth conductor is there then this path is have a very low uh, impedance. So, normally we do not expect any current to flow here, but uh, so in case you want to isolate this situation. So, what we do is take the sum of this four currents and in case they are uh, you know above a threshold it means some current is flowing through the earth or the protective earth conductor and uh, this we keep a low threshold so that uh, there is uh, you know it conforms to the safety. So, what we do is uh, RCD it is called a, a residual current device or RCCV which is a residual current circuit breaker uh, and what we will do this in this simple experiment is to show you that in case you have got simple unbalance. Uh, the RCD will not operate. In fact, so what we will do is have an RC, uh, RCCB connected between these four conductors and uh, what we will do initially is have a balanced load there is no neutral current uh, negligible neutral current and uh, what we will do next uh, is give a slight unbalance. So, we will in fact short one phase of the load. Yeah, so, uh, what we will do is in fact uh, what is done is fact is not shorting this sorry what we will do is open one of the loads. So, what we will do is open one of the loads, but uh, even if we open uh, you know one of the phases of the load I am sorry. So, what we will find is that although there is unbalance uh, the sum of the four currents will still be 0. Okay. So, this is not a fault situation, but in case uh, I have got I will do another experiment in which uh, I will not disconnect one phase of the load, but what I will do is this is grounded 
what I will do is connect a large resistance to ground here ok. Now, the sum of the three current four currents is not going to be 0 because there is going to be an alternative path like this uh, and this essentially will uh, you know trigger the RC RCCV because the sum of the four currents is not going to be 0. So, this is what we will show in this in this uh, demonstration. So, you have got a three phase supply and at the bottom is the neutral uh, and in fact, uh, this is the RCCB which is connecting actually the four wires, uh, the phase, three phases and the neutral wire. There are four wires going in here, okay. And uh, in fact, uh, so you can see this, in fact it is going uh, to the three star connected uh, resistor bank. And uh, in fact, what we will do is uh, switch this on now the is connected in star. So, you see the star points are connected together and the star point is of course, going back into the source ok. Uh, uh, remember that the source to this supply is in fact, uh, can you pause for a minute? Yeah, the source to this supply is a three phase neutral and remember at this uh, you know at the supply to the lab itself uh, the cable which is supplying it, uh, the neutral is in fact connected to the earth. So, the neutral and the earth are more or less at the same potential. So, but in this particular experiment what we will do is actually connect the three phases and neutral uh, to the corresponding three phase uh, star connected load and the neutral wire is connected to the neutral wire of the source ok. So, that is how the connection is made yeah and we have switched on the load now yeah. So, what uh, one phase now will be opened ok. So, even if you open this one phase of the system, uh, although it causes unbalance, it does not cause the uh, circuit breaker to trip. In fact, everything is going on as before. So, in fact, uh, you have got, uh, I have opened one of the phases and uh, so there is no, uh, you know, no tripping of the RC RCCB, yeah. Now, if you look at another uh, video, in which case, in this case, as I mentioned some time back. So, you got this three phase supply and uh, we will simulate a kind of a high impedance fault as I mentioned some time here. Uh, we will kind of simulate a situation where say a human being has touched a live part here ok or, or some part has gone live uh, or uh, some current is flowing going for whatever reason some current is flowing through the earth. Now, the sum of these four currents is not going to be equal and because it is not going to be equal, you will find in fact that uh, you know this RCB will operate. So, what we will do is we will connect this uh, resistance which is uh, I believe of around 2, two, two kilo ohm uh, more than uh, is uh, more than 2 kilo ohm and so the current flow through this is very less ok. So, this is a RCCB and uh, that is something we have seen in the you know previous. Now, what we are going to do is actually simulate a flow of current through the ground by connecting uh, this is the neutral wire of course and what we are going to do is connect the earth via this 2 kilo ohm resistance bank uh, to one of the phase uh, phases ok. So, in fact, what will happen is that it will cause a path to the ground. So, this is like simulating a situation where a human being has touched a life part ok. And if that happens, uh, uh, we will also measure the current. So, what we will do is actually now this setup in fact uh, is going to be switched on now ok. So, what we will see is in fact, uh, so, we switch on the supply and there is no problem here because we have not yet connected the uh, you know this high impedance to the earth, uh, you have not you know caused some current to flow to the earth. Now, what we are going to do is now switch on uh, this high resistance to the earth, actually remember that this one phase of the supply is connected to the li large, uh, large resistance to the earth. So, what will happen is some current will get shunted out into the earth and the RCCB should 
detect that the sum of the four currents that the uh, is not equal to 0 because there is actually a alternative path which is going uh, through the earth ok uh, is connected to the earth. So, there is an alternative return path which is actually going from the phase uh, of one phase of the supply into the resistance to the earth point here which is in fact connected to the uh, neutral at the source ok. So, there is a closed path here. So, actually the some current is getting shunted through this high resistance connection to the earth. And now, what we will see is in fact that as soon as we switch this on uh, because of this current flow the through flow through the earth which is in fact uh, uh, you know uh, you know about 100 milliampere has been detected by the RCCB and it is in fact isolated the supply and we actually measured the current and we saw that uh, in fact this RCCP uh, tripped about 100 milliampere current in less than a couple of cycles. So, in fact slightly more than uh, 2 cycles it is got tripped out. So, this RCCP in fact is, uh, is, is got a characteristic uh, which if more the current uh, the lesser time it takes to trip. So, this is a nice safety measure uh, it is not uh, required under all circumstances especially if you have got uh, you know a situation where it is unlikely that the uh, you know uh, for example, where you got protective multiple earthing uh, and uh, the neutral and the protective earth is bonded together and grounded at various points uh, this may not be necessary. But uh, especially in the TT system which we saw some time back uh, or in the situation where the protective earth wire gets disconnected or there is a you know the if in fact. Uh, so, th under these circumstances of course, uh, or, or in fact, if the uh, electrode uh, has got a higher resistance, the local electrode which grounds the body uh, has got a high resistance. So, in such a situation uh, you will in fact uh, have uh, you can in fact use this device. In fact, remember that uh, current flow through the earth I mentioned some time back not only encounters the electrode resistance, the local resistance of uh, the earth at that point some amount of resistance while it flows through the earth, uh, but also an impedance because there is a loop impedance ok. So, uh, just getting back to uh, uh, some one more kind of connection is uh, this is called the IT connection where you actually do not connect the neutral directly to the earth. In fact, it may be isolated from the earth. Now, the danger of having an uh, well uh, the thing is that if you do not connect the neutral to the earth and uh, in case there is a fault between the line to the earth. So, just if you look at this situation suppose you got a star connected load let us say you know this is one easy way of trying to understand it. So, if you have got in fact a situation like this and this neutral is in fact not connected to the earth. In fact, there is no uh, let us say intentional connection to the earth actually since this is a metallic part and the earth also is a conductor there are parasitic capacitances, but these capacitances are very very small ok. So, for all practical purposes this neutral point the amount of current flowing to this earth is going to be minimal. So, even if some point gets inadvertently connected to the earth because of a fault ok there is going to be no current uh, you know uh, very little current flow. In fact, the amount of current flow will be limited uh, you know very less because this capacitance here to ground which is a parasitic capacitance between the neutral point and the ground is going to be very small ok. So, uh, because of this the impedance is very large. So, there is hardly going to be any current. So, uh, this kind of uh, ungrounded system not intentionally grounded system this is only a parasitic capacitance is not an intentional ground. So, if you do not have a neutral connected to ground the advantage is that if you have a fault to ground here there is hardly any current flow. So, you can in fact go on operating like this without any problem ok. So, this is good from the service continuity point of view, but there is a problem here and that is of over voltage. What happens is that the voltage of this this healthy phase with respect to ground 
now becomes the line to line voltage. So, what happens is that the this point ok the potential of this with respect to ground becomes this voltage plus this voltage. So, what it or the voltage between a point here and the ground becomes the line to line voltage which is root 3 times the phase to neutral voltage. So, any kind of unbalance or unbalanced fault will cause the potential of the phase some of the phases with respect to the ground rise to uh, the line to line voltage ok which is root 3 times the phase to neutral voltage. So, that you are effectively having an over voltage and that means that the life path with respect to a ground part grounded part uh, say the body uh, will rise to root 3 times and then the insulation may become inadequate. So, if you have got a uh, this whole thing enclosed in a metallic body and there is an insulation between uh, the metallic body and the life point the and there is a fault to ground what you will find is the healthy part uh, the potential of that with respect to ground becomes root 3 times. So, your insulation design gets the insulation gets stressed. Another problem is that if you have got one fault and then another fault occurs this is already grounded and now this gets grounded as well. So, if there is a double fault then the amount of current can be huge ok. So, then uh, it is as bad as a you know the earlier situation where the fault currents can be quite large. So, not grounding the neutral for a single fault there is hardly any fault current. So, you can actually continue operating, but then the healthy phase with respect to ground the voltage will rise, uh, but if there is a double fault there could be large fault currents as well. So, then you have to protect against the double fault. So, you know this is going to be a bit tricky from a protection point of view. So, normally the neutrals of uh, neutrals are in fact grounded uh, to avoid these over voltages and the possibility of uh, you know a double fault taking place ok. Even in a extra high voltage system uh, we in fact avoid we in fact keep the neutrals solidly grounded because we do not want to have over voltages in case you have got un unbalanced faults because that will stress the insulation ok. So, that is one of the reasons why not grounding the neutral is not not normally done in fact mostly the neutrals are grounded uh, you know uh, especially at the source, but depending on the kind of uh, you know uh, if you use a TNC connection you may actually a TNCS or TNC connection you may actually have uh, the neutral connected to the earth at various locations as well ok. So, this is the kind of uh, you know uh, various connections you can have the TN connections and the TT connection and the IT connection ok. So, this is in fact uh, this not grounding the neutral or grounding it through a large impedance is not something which is uh, very common these days ok yeah. So, what are the uh, you know this table is is kind of summarizes uh, some of the characteristic if you have got a TT system TT system means there is no protective earth conductor only local ground at the load and the neutral is grounded at the supply in that case. Uh, as I mentioned to you the ground currents may be somewhat lower because of the earth resistance impedance of the earth. So, uh, detecting a fault sometimes becomes a bit tricky. So, it is important to it is preferable to have a re residual current device as I showed you some time back. Uh, there is no of course, uh, uh, there is no protective earth conductor the only thing is that you have got a local electrode which you may have. Uh, so, this is safe as long uh, and it is considered safe as long as you use a uh, good residual current device ok. So, uh, but of course, uh, because of there is a high loop impedance and if there in fact the current since there is no protective earth conductor the current will actually flow through the ground in case there is a fault ok. So, there is a problem of uh, not only the fault currents uh, you know may be smaller, uh, but uh, in case the fault currents are larger you can also have the problem of uh, step voltages something which discussed this uh, discussed some time back ok uh, right in the beginning and uh, it is it is considered safe and reliable, but uh, the I, IT system of course, does not have any uh, because your uh, neutral is in fact isolated or connected through a very large fault impedance got the highest loop impedance uh, uh, you know the RCD is not applicable here because the neutral there is no neutral 
in fact uh, if you go to the previous slide I think I just missed out one small point here uh, in the IT connection there is no neutral wire uh, you know coming from the source okay in fact uh, you know you you know all the although there is the neutral is grounded at the source through a large impedance or it is kept open okay yeah. So, the IT system has got neutral not grounded for all practical purposes in fact you can uh, uh, you know uh, it, it is considered less safe because of the double fault problem and possibly an over voltage problem as well okay. And uh, the of course, the advantage is that you can continue operation if there is a single fault uh, because uh, there will be hardly any current flow through the ground. So, you can operate as normal, but there could be a possibility of over voltages on the healthy phases. Uh, in the TANS system, uh, because you have got a protective earth conductor which is separate from the neutral conductor, it is a safe uh, low fault impedance. Uh, but of course, if there is a protective earth conductor gets broken, then you may have to rely on a residual current device uh, to actually figure out that there is a fault and isolate it quickly. Uh, TNC uh, in the classical form where uh, you know there is no protective earth conductor uh, or rather the neutral and the protective earth conductors are combined broken neutral uh, can create a, a major problem because the exposed metallic parts which are in fact connected to the neutral their potential with respect to earth may rise. So, broken neutral is can be a bit of a problem is a significant problem, but to some extent this can be uh, you know uh, you know mitigated by in fact having uh, uh, you know at the you know load end grounding it at the load end and not only that uh, you can even uh, have neutral and uh, the protective earth conductor and connect them at uh, you know uh, at multiple locations and connect it to the earth. So, that is called a protective multiple earthing TNCS. So, in fact, the neutral and the protective earth are bonded at various points. So, that is why it is a combined T, T the C there means combined and S means separate. So, it is a combined and separate uh, at uh, at various locations protective multiple earthing is there then this is a safe system okay. So, uh, the, this is uh, you know a broken neutral can be a problem, but as I mentioned some time back in case you have got uh, you know protective earth conductor and you connect the neutral and the protective earth conductor at regular intervals to the earth then a broken neutral or a broken protective earth conductor will be less of a problem okay. Yeah. We will continue with our discussion on this in the next class.